In this video, we're going to talk about creating linkages with sketch blocks. So on the screen, we have the part file suspension linkage, and we're going to take a look at sketch one. So as you can see, sketch one has three blocks in it currently. We have block one, which is a swing arm for a motorcycle or a bicycle. We have block two, which is a bell crank. We have block three, which is referred to as a dog bone. We have some relations on the screen. Go ahead and show those. So we have the pivot point of our swing arm located at the origin. We have the pivot point of our dog bone fixed in space. And we have a couple of points on each that allow everything to move in unison. So if we created this assembly, let's say we wanted to simulate a shock. We needed to figure out the shock travel so we knew how long to make each of these linkages. Let's go ahead and make two more sketch blocks. So I'm just gonna draw two lines and their dimension doesn't really matter at this point. So I'm gonna leave them underdefined. But what I wanna do is create a block. So we're gonna make that first instance a block. We're gonna make this second instance a block as well. So what we wanna do is take the bottom point of one of these lines and make it coincident with the point on our bell crank that's gonna locate our shock. Then we're gonna take the second one and we're gonna fix the upper end in space. Then we wanna take one of these points and make it coincident with that line. Then we wanna take both lines, make sure that they're collinear. The collinear part's important because if you simply make that endpoint coincident, this can still pivot about the top point, so you're not really getting a true representation here. So once we've created that, we can now move everything up and down, and you can see how the shock travel would be. But let's say we still need to understand the dimensions here, so we need to understand how much shock travel we're actually getting. So what we want to do is create a dimension from this point up to this point. I'm going to right click so I lock that in as an ordinate dimension. And it's 10.85, I'm just gonna hit okay. What I need to do is escape out of my dimension command and I'm gonna right click, scroll down and make this a driven dimension. Making this a driven dimension allows me to still move my parts, my sketch blocks, and allow it to update based on the movement. So we can see here at the beginning, we start out a little bit over 10 and three quarters. And as we get compression here, we go down to just under nine inches. So this is a good way for us to plan out our assemblies. We can make tweaks to any of these values, such as this arm here. And let's say that we wanna shorten it up or lengthen it up. Let's make it 5.5 inches long. Then we can exit that block and take a look at what we've done here. So you can see everything still moves around and we've effectively changed it now to being 11 and a quarter inch down to nine inches. So you can see this is a quick and easy way to create these complicated assemblies, figure out your geometry before you ever create a solid part. Let's take a look at another example. We're gonna open the vice grips part and take a look at sketch one. So you can see on the screen, we have a complicated assembly of a vice grip. We can move the jaws around and take a look at what we have here. So let's say we need to figure out the points of our pivots and also the amount of travel we need for this adjustment screw. So let's go ahead and place a dimension on the endpoints of the jaw. And again, we're gonna escape our dimension value and right click on that and make it driven. So now we have a driven value and we can alter things like the dimension that that screw is in. So we can see that we're able to get down to a zero dimension jaw. We can open it up and take a look at the widest it's gonna open. All right, so you can see that'll open up to a little bit over two inches and we can drop this down to half an inch and we can take a look at the travel that we get. So it opens up to three and a quarter and it closes to a little bit over two and five eighths. So this is very important information when you're creating a complicated assembly such as this vice grip. These pivot points are critical and having the ability to use these sketch blocks and create this information before you ever create solid geometry is extremely important because it's gonna save you a lot of time and energy. You don't wanna create all these parts and get to the end, throw these in an assembly and actually move them around and figure out this is not exactly what you want. You need to go back to the drawing board and fix all the components. And as you can imagine, this is gonna go all the way back to the root of your part. So now we can base these parts on a sketch block or a sketch entities, and we can use this information to our advantage. That concludes the video on creating linkages with sketch blocks.